This is Fang, a cool name created for the biggest companies in Silicon Valley. But over the last few years, a lot has changed because Fang is done. And now it's all about the Trillion Dollar Club and their newest member, NVIDIA. Which is wild because NVIDIA ain't known like the rest of their club members. But that only gonna matter because they make a lot of money. For example, in one day, the value of the company went up by 184 billion, which is worth more than any of the competitors in their industry, which has to leave you wondering, what the hell does NVIDIA do? Can you give me a very basic definition of what NVIDIA is? Well, we're the world's engine for AI, or we could turn something that costs a lot of money and make it much more affordable. And so we created this thing called accelerated computing. And that was what we pioneered about three decades ago. And it's taken until now to really take off. All right, let me translate all that. NVIDIA got a monopoly. They're the only ones on the block with the supercomputer chips that all these companies need to make their advanced tech. So ChatGPT is changing the world. But did you know that NVIDIA makes the supercomputer that runs? Damn, Google, so now you got to put out BARD in order to compete with OpenAI? Well, you better go holler at NVIDIA about them chips if you want to power it. Oh, so Mark Zuckerberg, you want to build the metaverse. <laughs> Not without NVIDIA. You ain't. Oh, yeah, Tim Cook. Word on the street. New provision that you're trying to sell for the price of a newborn child. That's what's up. But did you go get your chips from NVIDIA yet? Oh, Elon, you trying to put out them driverless cars, right? Well, you need to stop tweeting and go make nice with my boy Jensen and pray that my dog still got some chips for you. Oh, and U.S. military, I ain't forgot about y'all either. Y'all want them top of the line weapons before China and Russia, right? So y'all better go pick up Biden and tell him to go hit up NVIDIA before China buy up all the damn chips. I was told from one of their major customers that they had to beg, uh, like, get on their knees and bag for thousands of GPUs and like the lobbying effort. He said there's a line around the corner to buy these. So I'm gonna let y'all think about it like this. And just like back in the day in the actual gold rush, it was two ways you can get rich. You can be like all the rest of the sheep and actually go digging for gold or you could be the guy that sells the pickaxes and show. You see, this is what Jensen Wong and NVIDIA are. They're the plug. And all the rest of these tech giants and CEOs need to connect. Now I know what you're thinking. What makes NVIDIA so special? I just thought they sold graphics cards. And what about AMD and Intel? I thought their chips was better. And I can answer that with a little bit of story time. Jensen Wong was born in Taiwan, but immigrated to the United States at a young age. And as a teenager, he was a beast at tabletop tennis, finishing third place in the U.S. Open in junior doubles. A few years later, he attended Oregon University, where he graduated with a degree in computer science. After that, he took a job at a Silicon Valley computer chip startup where he got to work with some really important engineers, Andy Bechtelshahn, John Rubenstein, Chris Malachowski, and Curtis Prime. And the entire idea of NVIDIA started here with three young computer programmers where they were the odd man out on the future of computing. Cause you see, this is the heart of the PC boom and all of the smart engineers in Silicon Valley were split on the future of computing. Cause 99% of them believed that chips called CPUs or central processing units were the future because of how well they perform one task at a time. And then there was the 1% of engineers, the odd men out that knew eventually CPUs wouldn't be enough and that more powerful chips geared towards large computations will win. These chips will be called GPUs or graphic processing units. And they're really important because unlike CPUs, which focuses on doing one task at a time, GPUs are paralyzable. Well, paralyzable, paralyzable. Look, they're good at multitasking. And he is going to paint a picture for you guys in the way that a CPU might do it, as a series of discrete actions performed sequentially, one after the other. <laughs> when we hit this trigger on this thing, it goes through these accumulators, out these valves, into all 1,100 of these tubes, into these tubes in which the bottom of is a paintball. Each of those paintballs will fly across seven feet of space and in 80 milliseconds reach its target. Three. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, science class is now over. So because they knew eventually GPUs will be more important than CPUs, these three oddballs decided to leave their jobs and form a company. A company that's inspired by two words that they used to put in front of all of their files, which eventually gave them the name, NVIDIA. The one company in the industry that would have a monopoly on GPUs. The chips that nobody cared about because they were only good at multitasking and large computation. But even in the PC boom, Jensen knew that he could find something that GPUs were better at than CPU. Then boom, it hit video games. So GPUs end up being the foundation for the entire video game industry because if it's one thing that every gamer cares about, it's graphics.
approach the fence. So NVIDIA rides the video game wave for a little over a decade, growing their company strictly by providing better graphics to gamers. But Jensen knew he couldn't ride the wave forever and that he needed to find another purpose for GPUs before the competitors could catch up. But lucky for him, one of the most important events in technology history will be right around the corner, and NVIDIA's GPUs will be right at the center of it. September 30th, 2012, the date that's widely acknowledged as being the Big Bang of AI. Because on this day, a deep layer convolutional neural network won the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenge. In short, I'll let Morpheus explain. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI. You mean artificial intelligence? This day is so huge because AlexNet didn't just win ImageNet. It completely destroyed the competition. I mean, it was a blowout. But in order for you to understand how big of a deal this was, let me put you on exactly what ImageNet is. So it's 2007 and Dr. Faith Bailey just finished her PhD in computer vision. And when she looked around the industry, she realized that all of the smartest people were working on computer models and algorithms. And nobody, I mean nobody, was focusing on visualizing computer data. So for 15 years now, starting from my PhD at Caltech and then leading Stanford's Vision Lab, I've been working with my mentors, collaborators, and students to teach computers to see. So one day, she met with another professor named Christina Feilbaum. Feilbaum is the co-creator of another project called WordNet. Now, not to get too deep into it, but WordNet is a large data set from the 1980s where you take a bunch of English words and you organize them into a categories that form a tree. So if you start with a word like green apple and you put it into a tree structure, and above green apple, you'd have an apple, then a fruit, then a plant, and you get the idea. So when the two professors first met, Professor Feldbaum was like, yo, Fei Fei, you know what'll be dope? If you took the words from WordNet and then you added some images to it so that people can get a reference of what the word is about. So then Fei Fei was like, yeah, that would be dope, but nah, I'm not gonna do that. But you did give me an idea what I could use the images for. Could create a large data set that could be the key to completely unlock AI. So instead of focusing on solely on better and better algorithms, my insight was to give the algorithms the kind of training data that a child was given through experiences in both quantity and quality. And she uses this data set to be the foundation for the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenge, where teams of computer scientists from all around the world can use their computer models to try to recognize and label exactly what the images are. So a bunch of the teams entered to the competition with their CPU-powered computers, except for one team. They used GPUs powered by NVIDIA, and they named their model AlexNet. It was named after the designer of the network with the help of his PhD advisor, Jeffrey Hinton, aka the godfather of artificial intelligence, who's also the co-founder of the Convolutional Neural Network. Do you have any, you're seen as like a godfather of this industry. Uh, he's earned the moniker a godfather of AI. One of the things that AI has traditionally had problems with is humor. As it turned out, the wealth of information provided by ImageNet was a perfect match to a particular class of machine learning algorithms called Convolutional Neural Network, pioneered by Kunihiko Fukushima, Jeff Hinton, and Yan Lankun back in 1970s and 80s. And there was another guy on their team named Ilya Suchkaber, aka the co-founder of OpenAI and the chief architect behind ChatGPT. So these three men putting together AlexNet and winning ImageNet becomes known as the Big Bang in AI. Yeah, we started feeling it. We started hearing about it before that, and then ImageNet kind of it mm -hmm. was it was the Big Bang, if you will, got all of our attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making it crystal clear that if you wanted to build an AI going forward, you had to use GPUs from Nvidia. So Jensen decides to get close to a lot of computer scientists that are focusing on artificial intelligence, and they all tell him that GPUs are by far the most important ingredient for any advanced technology that requires a chip. So after a while, Jensen does it. He bets the farm on AI, completely ticking off his investors because they want him to focus on the upcoming PS4 and Xbox war. But Jensen doesn't listen. Instead, he doubles down on CUDA, a software language that makes it easier for anybody to work with GPUs. And then he gets the word out to every computer scientist that'll listen that NVIDIA chips are computational juggernauts, that they're the future. And if they have any dreams of working with AI in the future, then it has to be with NVIDIA chips. Trust me, he says, just wait, it's coming. And then nothing, no sales spikes, no stock jumps, no digital transformations, leaving Jensen to wonder if he made the worst mistake of his career. That is until another boom comes along. 
a boom started by a mysterious invention and a failed revolution. Bitcoin hits $1,000. 5,000. And by late 2017, it does it. Bitcoin hits $10,000 for the first time ever, making thousands of people millionaires overnight. But you wanna know who's making the most money off of Bitcoin? The miners. For the first decade of Bitcoin's existence, the entire currency relied on this decentralized network of computers working together to solve these large math problems in order to create or mine any new Bitcoin. Now, I'll give you one guess to name me what type of computer chips powered the computers that mined the Bitcoin. So as crypto rises, so does Nvidia stock. Well, that is until 2018, when the crypto hype hits a wall and Nvidia's RTX series of graphics cards just flat out suck, which makes a lot of investors nervous. Mostly because investors are like, is all this money coming in only because of crypto? Because if that's true, then I'm out. So what does Nvidia do? Knowing that they don't want their stock tethered to crypto. Well, they lie about it. Another story and that is NVIDIA agreeing to pay a five and a half million dollar fine as part of a settlement. This is fascinating. So it basically boils down to NVIDIA allegations that NVIDIA failed to adequately disclose just how much of its revenue, but they did pay that five point five million dollar fine. And this is fascinating. But they only did that so that they can buy some time until their big bet paid off. And at the end of 2022, old boy did it up. Artificial intelligence tools like ChatGPT. 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 The birth of ChatGPT sent NVIDIA stock through the roof because now everybody that wants to create any type of advanced technology needs NVIDIA's GPU. The GPUs are, um, at this point, considerably harder to get than drugs. <laughs> so think about all that future tech you keep hearing about. Driverless cars quantum computing, biotechnology, robots, artificial intelligence. None of it is possible without NVIDIA's GPUs. And here's the kicker. You remember CUDA, the software that sits on top of these GPUs? Well, that's the main reason that Apple, AMD, or Intel ain't gonna be able to get into the GPU game no time soon. Why? That's because CUDA is proprietary to NVIDIA, which means it'll cost these companies way too much money to stop using their chips which is why a lot of people think that this Nvidia stock ain't gonna slow down no time soon. But yes, Nvidia stock year to date has risen almost 200%, but the crazy thing is that 200% rise gives the company a market cap of over a trillion dollars. On NVIDIA, given its contribution to generative AI and today's AI, NVIDIA, CapEx or capital expenditures. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, before you go dumping all your money into Nvidia stock that's valued at a trillion dollars, because history has taught us that whenever there's a tech boom, the first people to get their money are the chip manufacturers. So Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, companies like that are supposed to boom first with the invention of new technology like artificial intelligence. So what the cycles tell us that the next company is up are infrastructure and devices and then software and services. In the end, NVIDIA's gains today will be then spread across NVIDIA. Facebook will have their own chip. Amazon will have their own chip. Google already does. Apple will have their own chip. All the memory companies will be in this space, right? So then the profits get smeared there, multiples compressed. But none of that matters right now. Look, Nvidia has a monopoly and they even solved their geopolitical and supply chain problems by moving their manufacturing company out of Taiwan into the States. The demand is literally from every corner of the world. Uh, that we are working on both supply uh, today for this quarter but we have also procured a substantial amount of supply for the second half. So as all said and done, NVIDIA is about to be one of the most powerful companies in the world, cherry picking which countries, companies, and startups that they'll allow to build the future with them, all because it is one chip, one chip to rule them all.